Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Sarah from the future. I'm trying some fun camera angles here. I'm actually in a hotel right now. I'm in London. I'm doing some more work at the Natural History Museum and hopefully I'll get to talk about that a little bit later. Right now I'm trying to go sequentially on my channel with things that I was doing with my dermestid experiments. Something that I was worried about as I started working with the dermestid beetles was whether or not I could actually get them to bore into bone, whether or not I'd actually be able to figure out what would cause them to damage bone. Usually people who work with dermestid beetles like to work with them because they don't damage bone. And I'm trying to do the exact opposite of that. I'm trying to get them to damage bone on purpose. And I'm trying to understand why they do that. Actually, the question that I'm really trying to ask is why they don't do that more often. It seems like there is a nutrition opportunity there. Vertebrates, which includes herbivores, not just carnivores, will actually chew on bone to get mineral content out of it. There's not a lot of answers for that particular question, so that is actually the bigger picture of what I'm trying to delve into with these experiments. At this point in time with my research with the dermestid beetles, I was actually worried about whether I would be able to ever get the beetles to deliberately damage bone and create boreholes in particular so that I could understand those better because even when I was looking at specimens at Tring, I wasn't able to find a lot of things that looked like boreholes. It was different kinds of damage, particularly on the edges of bones and things like that. It wasn't boreholes. And boreholes in particular are considered very distinctive to dermestid beetle damage in bone. It's very diagnostic. And our best understanding at this point in time is that it's related to pupation. They're usually called pupation chambers. And it's related to the larvae. Once they get big and fat, they're ready to go through their teenage phase, their pupation phase, before they emerge as adult beetles. And they need a place that's safe that they can go uh, through that particular phase without getting predated uh, either by other insects or by members of their own species if food gets scarce. So this was something that I really wanted to try and capture with my research and I was worried at this point in time whether I would actually be able to capture that, whether I would actually be able to see that and I would be able to find constraints that would produce boreholes in bone and do that consistently. And my first experiment, things were not working out in that direction. I wasn't getting boreholes into dried skin, which is what some sources were saying was possible. When dermestid beetles are isolated and they don't have another place to go, they don't have other substrate to go into, they will actually pupate into dried flesh. And I just wasn't seeing that with my particular experiment. There are probably some weaknesses with my first experiment. I think there were definitely weaknesses with that first experiment. I was trying things out. I was trying to figure out how to run an experiment, how to work with the dermestid beetles. And my other experiments after that definitely got better. But what's really exciting about this point in time is I've had a breakthrough with the beetles. It's not in a way that I'm expecting. And so there are still some challenges ahead that I will show in later episodes as I move through other experiments that I do. But it's really exciting because I'm starting to see at this point in time, after so much frustration trying to get the colony going and having all this worry about whether I could actually control variables to some degree to get this effect, to get dermestid beetles to bore into bone. And that's what I wanna share with you in this episode. So come along, let me show you what I found. This video shows insects that are involved in decomposition. This topic may not be for everyone. Friday, May 5th, 2023. Hey guys, so I'm back at the Botanic Gardens. It's actually been a couple of weeks since I've checked on my beetles. Um, things just got really busy. There were bank holidays and I wasn't feeling well. <laughs> and so this is my first time in a couple of weeks that I've been back to check on my beetles. My main concern is really that the main colony gets something to eat because they probably chewed up the uh, last bit of stuff I gave them within a week. <laughs> so I'm gonna go check on them, uh, give them some raw chicken, and then check and see kind of what happened with the other experiment. I assume the other little beetle uh, beetle larvae that I stuck in there are probably dead by now, but 
I'll check on them, see how that goes. Um, I'll clean that up and then uh, next week I'll start another round of experiments trying something else. And yeah, so let's see what happened with the experiments and let's feed the beetles. He's gotten like super puffy. That's really interesting. See this? Look. It's like it's all expanded and stuff. 26.2 degrees, 52% humidity. Guys, there's holes in the bones. Look at that. Right through the bottom. Excellent. It's actually really, really good. Okay, so I put some chicken in here for them so that they'll stop trying to fly out and they'll recognize that they have something they can eat in there. From what I'm seeing here, there's some larvae that have kind of um, gone into these little holes in the bottom of that uh, drumstick right there. As I'm watching the larvae crawl around on the end of this chicken bone, I'm starting to wonder if these boreholes could be more than pupation chambers. It might just be related to boring activities, so maybe they're just treating it like a substrate to hide in, or they were burrowing deeper in to try and get some bone marrow, nutrients out of it. Just to get a little bit more of a close-up view here, again, some of the adult beetles are going to try and fly out because they're hungry. But uh, you can see that there's some uh, larvae in these holes, and they're just kind of chilling in there. I pick this up uh, just to take a look here. Yeah, look at that. They're just larvae that are chilling, chilling on inside the bones. That's pretty cool. Let's see if I can get that in focus. So, yeah. Here's the temperature inside the experimental tank. So I'm going to open this is the control. Let's see what, uh, what it looks like. Do we have any live beetles in here? Alive. So we did actually have someone uh, turn into a beetle in here. Great. Found a couple more things here. I think if any beetles are alive, I'll just put them back into the uh, main tank. Okay, so basically I've just separated this from the cotton so I can get a better view of what's happened with the, uh, the control. Doesn't appear to be any boring into that one. Certainly not from the surface there, not from the side there. Not seeing any signs of boring into that either from underneath. Let's look in this one. So, did anyone... Oh, we have a pupa. We have a pupa right here. It pupated on the surface, so it wasn't willing to pupate um, into the flesh material. And it looks like we do have a beetle here. Okay, I'm actually going to lift this up and just see... Oh, that's super interesting actually. Look at that. So there's three more pupae right there. One, two, three, and then there's that fourth one. So there's three right there. Sorry, it's gone out of focus. And then there's the fourth one there. Four naked or non-burrowed pupae. But they pupated outside of this. They've been doing it on the surface of the sand here. Oh, that's super interesting. And I don't know to what extent they've used the sand as an abrasive material. I did want to have something in the bottom so that they could actually crawl around because it's difficult for them to crawl on the really slit metal surface. I don't see anything there that indicates that they've burrowed into this piece of meat at all. Despite having sort of no place to go, so there's, if I can hold my hand steady, Actually, there might be just a little bit of kind of chewing there. This is one of those moments where I'm glad that I have the video to review because I didn't recognize what this was at the time. This is definitely the beginnings of a borehole or a surface pit. So five, six, um, so six beetles have pupated. And they've done it on the surface here. Very interesting. Then you can see, let's see, is this guy alive? You alive? Uh, it might not be. Seven, eight. Uh, looks like maybe a couple of them died. This guy here is in the middle of pupating. Oh, there we go. Good wiggle. You can push out of there. Yeah, looking at that, um, it, they haven't pupated into that at all. Okay, guys. So now I'm opening number three. 
I'm excited to see what we have in here. Let me see what's happened here. Okay, we have someone has turned into a beetle here. Let me take a look. Oh, there's one more beetle there. You alive, sir? Pick this up. Let's see here. So we've eaten some of the flesh off of here, but we've actually left a lot of flesh on the ends, even, actually. So that bone is just kind of left alone. There's lots of frass on here. Okay. So that one doesn't have any holes in it. No friend. Oh yeah, that's interesting. I think that kind of indicates uh, not being super healthy when their little abdomens kind of stick out under their wings. But yeah, you can see this guy's managed to pupate and turn into a beetle. His wings appear to be underdeveloped. Uh, really far away, maybe. But yeah, there's no holes. No holes in this. They pupated on the surface, I bet. No holes at all. They've eaten quite a bit of the flesh off the end of that one, but yeah, they've really left the bone alone. And then, let's see, do we have, we have some little holes into the skin. They've been chewed in there. So there's little skin holes, but nothing, nothing going into the bone that I can see. there into the skin but not into the bone and yeah that's my results for experiment one you can see how quickly I mean there's still still quite a few in there but there's a lot of activity over here they found the chicken mm -hmm. and they're so happy they're chewing on it good grief I can't even hold my my fingers still but you can see that this larva that I just picked up is is alive. Ah, come on, focus. I'm gonna stop squishing him, but anyway, he's all right. They're soft prongs, but uh, you can see he's wiggling a little bit, so they're definitely alive. Very cool. So that's the first one from this corner. I'm just gonna stick it here. Back in the tank. Um, have a nice life as a beetle. Here we go. So that's the first one. Again, that is just awesome. Look at those holes. I'm going to investigate that a bit more to figure out if those are pupation or if it's just burrowing, which would actually be very interesting. You can see, I don't think they really touch much on this side. Uh, the bones there. Oh, hello, friend. Hello. That was dramatic. Popping up through there. Lots of frass. Lots of frass. Ah, look at that writhing mess. <laughs> I think there's a bit of gnawing on the top of that. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I think there's a bit in there. Oh, that's so cool. That's amazing. I'm really happy, actually. Happy accident here. Some more little bones here. Oh, I can feel the wet chicken. Okay, yeah, it's just tangled up in the frass here. Okay. I just noticed there's a little pupa right there too, even with all the, the bone material. I see another little piece of bone in there I need to pull out. But there's uh, clearly some pupation that's happened outside of the bone material. Chicken, more chicken, yes, yes. Okay, more chicken. Excellent. So there's six chicken drumsticks in here. So they should be very happy for the next little while. Okay, just to recap here on the results of the experiment. So in here, 
is the mummified chicken from the experiment that had sand in the bottom. This is the mummified chicken from the experiment with cotton substrate in the bottom. And then we've got the three others from the experiment. And these didn't really have a lot of signs of being burrowed into. And these are, are the bones that I pulled out. And yeah, there's a bit of gnawing on some of these and there were even some holes and it was this one right here that has the holes. So I'm going to take a few more pictures of these and then I'm going to call it good. The beetles have been fed and we have some interesting information. Thanks for watching.